morning, all you beautiful people out there. It is a sunny, hot day here in Tulsa. And uh, Mr. Ned and I are gonna do a little soft tail ride. Uh, nothing too pretty, unfortunately, cause you know, we're kinda gonna stay around town. We're just gonna get out a little bit, have a conversation and um, enjoy a ride with each other and uh, talk about kind of, we've got a lot of uh, questions and you know, like DMs basically, you know, asking us um, our age difference, how long we've been married, just some relationship things. So we thought we'd give you kind of a nuts 101 and, uh, you know, take a nice ride. So come along. you guys remember to like our videos and check out our YouTube page and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah I feel like we don't pander enough a you little know, bit a it little seems bit. like when you're when you're doing this type of thing you have uh, to people expect and want you to pander <laughs> and, it, and it's interesting because with our clients when we're advising them on video um, we advise them to pander a little bit sure um, it's just kind of like something that I never really wanted to do um, but yeah, please. Um, you know, subscriptions on YouTube and likes on Facebook all kind of count towards raising you up in the algorithm. Your videos get seen more and, you know, it's it's kind of fun because some of our older videos that we did without, wow, well, without any production whatsoever, um, they get a lot of views. Um, the first video I ever did on The Beast, um, that thing gets a couple hundred views a day. And again, I'm not saying a lot of views based on YouTube in general, but on our little audience, that's, you know, I really like the fact that we get good participation from our subscribers. And it's one of the reasons we haven't played that YouTube thing to where we go out and we buy subscribers just to get our channel up to a certain number. Um, we really want, we want authentic subscribers. We want people who actually engage um, and who actually want to see our content. Yeah, one of the things that we've gotten some on is, you know, I guess people have noticed that um, I'm old as shit. <laughs> And my wife doesn't seem to quite look um, old enough. So to, to go with you, I'm definitely old enough. Yeah, some, somehow we don't. You know, it, it's really kind of funny. I don't know if it's our age difference in our relationship or what it is, but um, we've always gotten those comments from people who get to know us. Like, how did you meet? Like, it's you know, I guess it's really you know curious as to how people with our age difference meet. So I'll let you describe kind of like our age difference and uh, why it is that you uh, decided that you wanted an antique of a husband. <laughs> Mr. Nutt and I um, have a 20 year age gap. Um, we have been together though mm, over 20 years. <laughs> so yeah, we're coming up on 21. Yeah, we are coming up on 21 in August. Um, it's an interesting thing because really, I mean, we've been together since I was in my teens, technically. And uh, he was in his 30s. And that <laughs> uh, sounds crazy, but now I'm right where he was. And it's really interesting um, just how 
how strange it never was for us, if that makes any sense at all. Like it was, you know, it was strange for everybody to see us together and to think about it when they would put, you know, the time, the, you know, the days together or the years we were separated together um, by our age. But it, you know, it was never weird to us. And I think that that just tells you how right it was and how right it has been. Obviously we're together almost 20 years, even though, you know, we met when I was young. So it's just, it's always just felt so right, so natural. We are, you know, like really best friends, not like the ones who say, oh, my husband's my best friend, but I lie to him and I don't do the things, you know, we do everything together. We're kind of, I Can we know. talk about some deep, dark <laughs> shit, actually? We're a little obsessed with each other, even still, um, or even now, which I think is just, you know, it's how relationships stand the test of time. Um, and, and so far ours has. And, uh, you know, motorcycling came into it in the last two, two years, basically, two and a half years. And that's just, I think, increased our love for each other and, you know, motorcycling. Um, but it's just, it's, I think it's made us stronger in a sense because it's just given us something else that we really find interesting where we're not, you know, tired of the old things. But sometimes when you've been with somebody for so long and you don't find new interests, um, it's, I don't know, it's hard to keep things interesting. You know, we, we, don't, we don't have any children of our own. Um, together and so a lot of you know to last 20 years without kids to keep you together is I think that's saying something too um I don't know what else what do you want to add well I mean you know one of the things you know in our relationship is we talk a lot <laughs> you know we've always been we've always gone for drives and, and we've always talked about motorcycles actually because motorcycles were a huge part of my young life and I always thought about getting a motorcycle the whole time we were married. Um, we were just always busy with building our business and building our careers and building, you know, our relationship to where I didn't feel that I missed motorcycles that much. Of course, now that um, we have them again and yeah. I'm riding again, I realize how much I did miss them. So for you guys out there that are giving up your motorcycles and thinking that you can take a 20-year hiatus and, and not regret it, I have some regrets about not riding and being as stubborn as I was when I was younger. Because the primary reason I stopped riding was helmet laws and, uh, you know, my own stubborn independence on wanting to ride the way I wanted to ride. But, you know, one of the things in our relationship is we talk a lot. We don't let problems sit ever. I mean, we talk about the most brutal of problems and issues as soon as they come up. So nothing really festers in our relationship, which I think is kind of cool and, and probably one of the reasons why we get along so well. Yeah, I agree. You know, we don't have, when we get into an argument, we don't have to bring up something that happened six or eight months ago because we actually resolved it. So we don't have those things to where it's like, but do you remember when you did this? And you remember when you did this? And you remember when you did this? Yes, yeah, those stacking or problems. Or I'm still carrying anger from this, or I'm still carrying bitterness about that. So probably the other interesting thing about our relationship is, that in all reality, um, I think Mrs. Nutt is the old one. <laughs> I am. I'm kind of an old soul. <laughs> um, I mean, she, you know, she's always telling me to turn down the music. She tells, you know, when kids get on the lawn, get off my lawn. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a grumpy old fucker, but I, I guess I'm not that bad. I still love my loud music. Oh yeah, you're definitely, I mean, the, I won't say like really immature or anything, but you are still a man and <laughs> men are pretty immature in general. You know, that's the weirdest thing about having kids in the house again is I was, I was an only child for a really long time. And it felt good being an only child. So we kind of look at this time of uh, riding motorcycles and especially, you know, when this is not took the rider's course and, and she bought her first bike. It kind of started, a, I don't want to say a new, well, it kind of started a new chapter. Yeah, I, de I definitely agree with that. I think, I think motorcycling in general, I mean, like riding two up before I got my um, license and was riding my own bike. I mean, that was like, it's, there, it's something 
one thing that, you know, part of me does miss as much as I'm like, you know, real bitches don't ride bitch. Uh, there is something very, you know, intimate and close about riding and being out together and, you know, riding close. It's, it's, it's a nice thing. So there are times that I miss it, you know, plus you get to kind of just hang out. That's always kind of nice to <laughs> enjoy the ride in a different way. Um, but no, I think motorcycling from, from the start, really, I mean, even just the, even the buying process, the whole thing was just, um, really like rejuvenating, I think for us and our relationship, we had just, um, you know, our business was, was kind of booming in a sense. And we were crazy busy where all we were doing was working and we didn't really have anything that didn't have to do with work. We got up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. and we were out of the house at 7, worked all day, came home, ate dinner, went to sleep and did it all again. And, you know, we really had no downtime. And this really created a nice downtime where we still felt we were still together. We were still thinking and being, you know, effective for our business, but we were not just kind of sitting around waiting for bedtime. You know, it was it's really just, uh, yeah, I, that, the word I can just think of is, is rejuvenating. I don't know. How, I mean, I think, does, does that make sense to you? It, it replaced a lot of distractions. Yes. I think we had things in our lives for our little downtime. There was just kind of a distraction where we would try and get distracted from work a little bit. Right. And uh, kind of, you know, rest and relax. And, and during that time, I mean, we actually had a little bit of stress internally because working together, um, <laughs> in a fast pace and, and, and kind of a really busy and, 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 and I mean, you know, our business life being designers and creatives and, and uh, you know, people who go inside businesses and, you know, most of the time when we, when we get inside a business, it's a little in trouble. So, um, or, it's, or it's looking for some serious growth. So there was a lot of pressure on to, to do something very special, especially since we don't, we kind of just work together. We have we have a lot of contacts that we work with, but it's primarily us. Right. So, I mean, it put a lot of pressure on everything and, you know, writing was that escape to where we could just get out and, you know, replace all those escapes that were kind of like not uplifting. And it was an uplifting escape, I think. For sure. I think our that downtime was, yeah. was somewhat depressing and it was somewhat of a letdown. <laughs> it wasn't uplifting. Right. So riding really kind of like brought back that uplifting. And for me, it kind of revitalized a part of me that I think had kind of like died. I hate, yeah. I hate to put it that way, but, no, it's you know, true. I've always I had a love true. of Harley Davidson. And I've always had a love of riding motorcycles, especially Harley Davidsons. So it immediately like reawakened something in me um, that I think had been kind of dormant. Yeah, no, it, it definitely changed uh, some things in you, I can see, um, as an outside source, obviously, which then kind of did the same thing for me. I mean, it was never something I hadn't missed, but it was like a whole new world. Right. And your, you know, excitement for it really just triggered that in me and then built my own excitement. And it was just, you know, we would go out just about every night after dinner kind of thing and just, you know, ride right. and talk. And it was... Uh, it was just, I think, one of the best things we did for our relationship, for sure. These were the things, best things that I did for my life, even you know, late right. in, late in, late in life, a little bit. Was it kind of like? I think it's kept me from getting too old. Yeah, no, I think it is. It's something that really, I think, a lot of uh, bikers or you know, motorcyclists, whatever. I think a lot of people will tell you that they make it keeps you young. It makes you feel young. It makes you feel free. It just, you know, it just, it, it is revitalizing. That's that's a good word as well. So, you know, for, if, if you're out there and you're a creative type, you're an entrepreneur, um, you're somebody who's building something special, you know, for me as a creative, conceptual idea person um, that doesn't rely on any one thing for any one business, I mean, you know, we're very specialized in that we get to know the business and help build business cultures. And a lot of that comes from us being plugged in to the energy and the philosophy behind the business model itself. You know, this is a, there's probably nothing better than, than riding motorcycles and, in my opinion, nothing better than riding Harley Davidsons. 
because Harley Davidsons are always inspiring you to create. We're always recreating our bikes, um, rethinking the ideas of our bikes. So I think the creative juices really flow really well from this hobby. Yeah, I, I agree. So we're getting into uh, 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 an area that's uh, south of Tulsa, uh, basically between the cities of Bixby and the little town of Haskell. Um, it's a great road coming through uh, Bixby and Leonard. Uh, follows the Arkansas River uh, pretty much all the way down to uh, where it makes a turn from Muskogee. Um, basically where it starts heading east. Just one of those things where I 